Hello. In computer animation, you can reach a goal in several ways. You probably know this. Uh, often, there are dozens of ways to achieve uh, the same result. Uh, internally, it looks totally different, but the result, the rendered image or film, looks basically the same. So when you get the question, can you animate a character walking uh, along a path uh, who has a hat on his head, uh, and then the wind blows the hat away? Can you do this? Yes, we can. And there are different ways to achieve this, and I'll show you one way. Uh, and I start, and that's a typical thing for computer animation as well, with a very simple scene, uh, which basically has all the technical stuff in it, although it doesn't use a character, it doesn't use a hat, but uh, then going from that scene, once you've experienced it, okay, th this is how it works, you can go to the complex scene. So don't start with a complex scene, start with a simple scene. Okay, let's go hunting. The objects we start with can be as simple as possible. For example, a cylinder. And uh, I've colored it, I've prepared a lampshade already, I color it yellow, and I move it all the way to the left. And I extend the frame range here for the animation to 400 frames. And I'm at frame 1, and I could press S now to set a keyframe for the position of this uh, object, but instead uh, I'll press Shift W, which only keys the translation parameters. Only the translation uh, parameters are keyed, uh, the rotation and scaling etc. is free. It doesn't really matter for the purpose of this uh, tutorial. W is, as you know, the translation uh, key for um, for the movement and um, so that's what I'm using shift W again so I'm keying both positions and uh, I don't want the cylinder to slowly start its motion and slowly end the motion now it slows down uh, I go to animation editors and choose the graph editor and here I see what is the problem which is not a real problem that's a slow start that's a slow end uh, I select this curve and break the tangents this is a tangent and this is a tangent I break the tangents by clicking on this icon here so it's a straight curve now which means the animation starts at the same speed as it is in the middle and as it is at the end now um, I need the hat and the hat can be for example a cone and uh, I color the cone with my Lambert 3, it's red. Uh, you don't have to do that of course but it's always nice to uh, play with these things. Um, I make the hat slightly bigger like this and now I need to m make the hat follow that cylinder. In order to achieve this you need to know the term. It's called constraint. And if you go to the help menu you can click on find a menu, type in constraint. And then Maya will list all the commands which have to do with constraint and uh, most of them are under FX that is meant by this here but the one we need here is um, under animation it's the constraint menu here the constraints always work in this way you select the master first and then the slave so the master the object which is in command of the motion here is the cylinder and then I shift select the um, the hat which needs to follow that uh, cylinder. And then I choose one of the constraints, in this case the point constraint. For example if I chose the scale constraint uh, every movement of the cylinder would be neglected by the hat but uh, whenever I scale the cylinder, make it longer or thicker for example, the hat would uh, scale accordingly. No, I want the point constraint and uh, this is how it works. The um, hat jumps to the center of the uh, cylinder. Now uh, I want the hat to sit on the 
uh, cylinder. Uh, let's first check if the constraint works. It works all right. Uh, I want the hat to sit on the cylinder, which is a very basic thing which you need to get under control. The easiest way is to uh, change the pivot of the hat to something like this. That's, that's fine. We press insert again, so now the hat is on top of the runner. That's perfect so far. Now the next thing is I want to say go to frame 150 and 150 is the uh, situation where the runner keeps running but he loses the hat. So how do I do this? I need to deactivate the constraint here. So um, the basic thing is to go back one frame so that's frame 149 and tell Maya until there the constraint needs to work and then I step one frame further and I say now it should not work anymore. So let's go back to 149. So everything should be intact here. So where do I deactivate the constraint? Well, the constraint is under the node of the cone. It's called P cone one point constraint one. Let's select it. And here you have several attributes and you need to check the node behavior because that's a very basic thing of the uh, constraint. And here you have the node state. That's, that means this is how this hat basically behaves. Uh, and you have a, a pull down menu which starts with normal and then it has waiting normal etc. Blocking and has no effect. So what I'll do now is I'm at frame 149. I right mouse click here on the on the name of the uh, command, the node state, and I set a key for normal. The key is here. This is the only sign that I actually got the key in the timeline. Now I go to frame 150 and I use that pull down menu to say blocking, which is basically meaning it has no effect and I set another key. So the animation goes like this now. We're approaching 150 and now the runner keeps running and the hat stays there. Well we're not done yet because now we need the wind to come into the game. Uh, you want the hat to be blown away and uh, there are several ways to do it but basically you deal with a dynamic system when the wind comes into the game and a keyframe thing uh, until the wind comes into into the game. There are two paradigms basic systems in Maya. One is the dynamic system where the objects follow dynamic forces gravitation for example and uh, the other system is the keyframe system where you have keyframes actually there's a third one which deals with equations and set driven keys etc uh, in this case we need wind that means a dynamic system and we have already keyframes and a constrained uh, effect here which we deactivated at frame 150 so uh, the simplest thing to do uh, to proceed is to actually copy that object, the hat in this case, uh, not at any frame but at frame 150. That's when it gets free. So this needs to be copied. Control D, it's a duplicate now. Now I need to deal with visibility, which is very simple. So uh, this cone needs to be invisible until frame 149. So uh, let's go to the visibility. Where is it? It's the cone shape, shape and the object display and here is the visibility and we can key that. Right mouse click key. It's not visible right here. So set a key. We go to frame 150 check visibility to on and set another key. Now the object um, 
uh, appears at frame 150. And now we need to do a similar thing with the previous object, that one. Uh, so let's go to frame 149 and this is selected so we key the visibility we go fra one frame further and we uncheck visibility and set a key again so now the animation looks like this and we are ready for the dynamic simulation so that's another that's a different cone from the one we've seen before. It's a duplicate. The other one is not visible anymore. It sits basically here. So with this one selected now, we can go to, um, well, FX, because it's a special effect now, and we can introduce, with this selected, a field. And I think a good start is always the turbulence, because it gets makes things really dynamic. The turbulence already works, but the hat is invisible. Now it's visible, and here you see how it works. Uh, well, the turbulence field here in the attribute editor has a standard magnitude of 5. Let's um, say, uh, well, actually, let's go back to frame 150, or 48, 49, and set the magnitude to 0. So it doesn't do anything. It just sits there and waits, but it's a dynamic object already. And once a uh, frame further, at 150, we raise the magnitude to, say, 30, which is quite a good value for uh, a nice um, simulation, dynamic simulation. So now the simulation looks like this. That's the old cone. That's the new cone. And the new cone starts flying away. We can, of course, increase the magnitude here to, well, say 200. And set another key. We're currently at 162, so that's pretty close to the uh, uh, time when they separate. Well, I think that's it. Well, the next step you can easily achieve yourself, and uh, I just show you the basic procedure. You import via Windows, General Editors, Content Browser, a motion capture character. It's under mo motion capture here, mocap. In my example, I use the Walker number one, which is a Maya ASCII file and uh, you just drop it into the scene and with the hat I modeled it using a NURBS curve and revolved it I'll show you the basic procedure here um, let's go to the front view here uh, I go to curves and surfaces and then I create the hat just like this I don't do it like this but uh, to g give you the idea so that's kind of the half profile of the hat, like this. And then I modify the little points here, and then I use this uh, icon here, which is the revolve, and this creates uh, the hat. Okay, uh, so that's for the hat, and um, the creature is here, the hat is here. Uh, you cannot use, actually you can, but uh, under animation, you have the constraints, you can use the uh, point constraint as we've done before with the cylinder and the cone, but it would basically follow the hip of uh, the creature, uh, the character, instead of his head. For the head we need to do this, it's a point on poly. That means you select uh, a couple of points or one point on the top of the head of the man, uh, and then constrain the hat to it. Otherwise, the whole procedure is basically the same. And, as you've seen in the beginning, this is my finished result.